Welcome back to another vlog. I'm back in Gretna for a little bit. We are packing up. I can't share any of the footage from that shoot until it gets produced, but uh, we're gonna fish on the way home. So that's what we're gonna share with you guys. But for now, gotta pack up this disaster. We got, we got a lot going on there. Uh, quite a bit there and just a, just a full cluster right there that needs to get sorted out in a hurry. Um, but next stop, we'll go pick up Kevin and we'll hit the road. And we're at Kevin's house. You remember him from all the goose videos? That's the guy. What's going on? What's the plan? Did you uh, get a model for us? Well, apparently uh, I wasn't supposed to pack anything because you have too much camera gear. Too much camera gear. All right, we're off to Winnipeg. Gonna go pick up Nick and then we're gonna make it to Bisset tonight. We're flying out of. Who do we have here? Oh, hey. We got Nick, we got Kevin. We are now about to depart. Three hours later. We made it to Bisset where we're flying out in the morning. It is midnight, we're gonna unload, and then we fly at six. We gotta be ready at the dock at 5.30, so. The beauty of filming fishing is sometimes you have to catch the fish. So we might do a little fishing on this trip. But I'm gonna try to fit all my tackle into this right here, because why not? You ready for it? <laughs> I just need to back a little bit. That's a wrap. We made it to Bisset in the San Antonio Hotel. We we're gonna sleep for four hours and we're gonna hit the float plane and we're gonna fish on the way home. So if, if you don't see us there, I'm sure we'll check in when we get back, but good night. <laughs> okay, flight's delayed. How long? Maybe an hour, maybe three hours? I don't know. And we're gonna go bass fishing because Rice Lake here has some big old bass. And we have some limited baits. I have a, it's called a Ned Rig, but basically just a plastic worm. Kevin's got a chug bug. So we're gonna go fish offshore and see what we can do. We're gonna fish around here and I think we're gonna catch some smallies. Look, there he is, watch this. You ready? Yeah, it'll just be, you won't be able to see the fish. Ready? Got him. <laughs> See each other fish. I thought I got a sitting there before. And that is Chilling. what you do when your flight's delayed. We had some rods in the truck, and I saw this fish sitting on a bed right by the docks. Gave away a hot spot now. And that is our first smallie of the morning. We're gonna catch a couple. We're gonna make the most of this flight delay. Gone. That was good. <laughs> he was aggressive. We are, oh, I lost him. Hooked up under the dock, that fish just crushed me. <laughs> we're, we're doing the shore fishing thing here. And uh, just, we have limited stuff we can fish, so just fishing under the dock here. And I got rocketed by a fish, so he might've been on a bed. I'm gonna cast back under there. But that fish just drilled me. I was just hopping along the edge. Got him. Oh, geez, it's a big bass. My goodness. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Bass number two. Fatty. Another nice matchup with Smalley. Number two. Waiting for our flight. And uh, we're catching. Always, you always need a rod in the boat for situations like this. I don't shore fish as much as I used to, but it's a different challenge. That audio is gonna be bad. Oh, it's gonna be so bad. We won't be able to hear anything. Oh, there we go. Here we go, here we go. Number three. Woo! We're slinging this one. Go ahead. Little baby. You're fat. Right there. Woo! Gone. That's okay. I wasn't expecting to catch any fish this morning. Number four. This dock has been good to us. 
This is just crazy. I can't imagine if we get out on a boat right now, how many fish we'd be catching, but it shows you, you do not need a boat. Nothing wrong with this. All right, we're going back. Kevin, do you want this rod? I set Kevin up with the top water in like big winds. But there's a bunch of fish under this dock. So I'm using, this is called the Ned Rig, and honestly it looks like half a Sanko, it looks like just a basic worm. I did not realize how popular these things are in the bass world until the spring. Basically, the main difference of this and a normal half a Sanko or plastic worm is this has tons of floating in it. So when it sits on the bottom, it's not gonna sit flat. It's gonna cock up a little bit. It just sits right in their face and just, just with how it pops off the bottom, it's a different, I don't know, whatever it's made of, it's got a little more silicone in it that makes it float. So that's what I'm doing, just hopping it along the bottom. And uh, it seems to be a good technique. These fish are, I don't think they're all bedding yet, but I think some of them are on bed. Some of those fish are still pretty fat, so. Kevin's hooked up, Kevin's hooked up, Kevin's hooked up. Here he comes. Woo! <laughs> Ooh, another round to Smalley. What's our count? Four? Five? Well, I think we hooked the biggest one of the morning. And it's gonna be I don't know if, I don't think it's a master, but it's it's pretty big. Like that's a good bass for the morning spent on shore. That's probably a 17 inch or so. We're gonna put it back and we're gonna keep fishing, but it shows you, you don't need a boat. The shore fishing opportunities are pretty sweet all over here. I mean, we're gonna probably fish a couple lakes on the way home after we finish this shoot, catch a couple more bass today. And I don't know, we got limited water. We've caught like, I don't know, how many bass, Kevin, eight? Eight bass probably, a couple pike, and you know, especially in summer and spring, the bass are shallow. You can just go bang shoreline and catch fish. What do you think? What are we doing? Give me an update. Loading up on the plane. We're finally got the all clear to uh, to head out. So we're loading up all the gear and we're heading out. Well, we will fish when we get back, but now we're going on a plane. Well, they decided to let me fly today, so it should be a good time to learn. It's not too windy and all these people are trusting me with their lives, so I'm pretty happy about that. Just kidding, we got a good pilot. Welcome back, folks. Four days of filming and uh, good times. And we're back on the road, but the fishing is not over, as promised. We are gonna fish on the way home and we are about to pull up to the Manigatagan River, which is just ahead here. I've never fished it before, but I hear that it's got a pretty good run of white bass in the spring. And we are gonna continue our spring fishing bonanza offshore and hopefully catch some white bass. Well, we are just rigging up and uh, we're gonna have a little fly versus swim bait competition, I guess. Have you caught a white bass before? Yes. Not on the fly though. I am throwing a little swim bait, a little three inch swim bait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna throw this little crank. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna throw maps. So those are my options. Option number four, bait fish pattern. I'm gonna crush him. There's a fish, fish shot! Yeah! Just about to switch baits. Oh, I hope it's a white bass. Oh, I hope it's a white bass. Don't be a pike. Be it's a white bass. We got a white bass. What we came for. Yeah! That is a little silver beauty right there. Look at that. Chowed that swim bait. Man, I just slowed it down a bit. These are cool fish. These fish just stack up here in these little tribs in the spring. And that's probably a 14 and a half incher, but it's a good start. Just like that. Number one on the board, took us five minutes. So I'm, my mood changed greatly as you could see in that last one. We're gonna keep, keep doing it. Maybe Kevin will get a couple on the fly.
might be tough to see, but when the sun comes out, that whole river turns like a copper color because there are thousands of suckers. I thought it was really shallow rocks at first, and then I saw them kicking up. There are so many. If you want to catch a master angler sucker, it's probably one of the best places. The matchable record used to be from here. It is wild. Like I, I was snagging them, not on purpose, just every cast. If you're not getting bit by a fish, you're bumping off a sucker or hooking a scale or, you know. It's cool. There are so many fish that get sucked into these falls. And this is low. I can't imagine this when the water's high, you know. Well, Kevin, what do you think of our trip together? Oh, it's been amazing. We've shared some good times. Oh, so cheesy. <laughs> We're done. That's a wrap. Finishing things up at the Magatogan River. Um, I think the theme of this vlog is making the most of your situation. Flight was delayed. We caught smallies offshore in Bisset. There's a bridge at the side of the road with a waterfall. We caught white bass. We caught smallmouth bass. We caught pike. Um, we saw it, a thousand suckers and carp at the bottom, which was pretty cool. I mean, it just shows you don't need a boat. Especially in eastern Manitoba, there's so many tribs, so many lakes if you go through the Nopaming and... Just get out there. Like I said, make the most of your situation. Well, I think that's pretty much a wrap. I'm sure you're gonna see Kevin on another vlog because he seems to be the most consistent co-host. That's true, we've made a, quite a few appearances already. Yeah. Uh, make sure to subscribe, make sure to follow Kevin on Instagram, and up next, I guess we'll wait and see.